Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to the Senior Resources Show. My name is Christine Carey and I'm the Director of the Town of Colony Senior Resources Department. Thank you for joining me today. My guest today is Anne DeSero, who is here representing the United Way 211 of the Northeast Region. Anne, thank you for joining me today. Glad to be here. Well, it's an exciting, exciting project that the United Way has taken on with the 211 program. Uh, can you give me a little bit of information about the 211 program? Well, 211 is um, a number that um, is a, just an easy to remember three digit number that connects people with any kind of health and human service information. Um, so if you think about 911 as a place that you call when you have an emergency, 211 is the place that you call when you want information about services um, in the community and health and, and uh, um, jobs and uh, all this sort of social service information that people might need to have. Mm -hmm. Is there an age group that people would access this 211 number? It's actually uh, available to anyone, um, which is what these public access numbers are. All that you need to do is to go into either your home or your cell phone and push 211 and you will get uh, this uh, uh, a live operator on the phone. Uh, we operate Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 o'clock. So it, if you can still call 211 24 hours a day, you'll just get a recording, you can leave a message, and somebody will get back to you. But it's really open to anybody who, who needs the service. Now, because our audience is primarily seniors that watch this show, but it is, you know, it's a show that's watched by everybody in the town, what ki types of issues would possibly a senior be able to get information on if they were to call the 211 number? Well, um, to, to just be um, show how comprehensive we can be, we are also connected uh, um, very closely with the offices for the aging in Albany County and the other uh, counties, and we serve a 12-county area. So uh, they can call 211 about any issue that, that they might be encountering, anything having to do with long-term care or housing, um, transportation, any questions they have about service. We will, um, you know, talk to them a little bit and figure if they need to be connected to your office, need to be connected to the county office for the aging, uh, or directly to a provider uh, so that they get um, the, it won't be an automatic transfer. In other words, you won't be connected directly, but you will get the phone number of the of the people that you need to get to so that you don't have to try to figure out how to get to where the services are. So the purpose of it really is not to duplicate because the system sometimes is fragmented, as you right. know. So this you kind of work as a conduit to other agencies to be able to refer folks either to the town department. And I think it's any way that a senior or a family member can get to our department, Many, even though we promote our services heavily, many people still don't know where to begin when they need help. So this, to me, is just another avenue for folks to, to use. Get but also if they wanted to, to volunteer and didn't know where there might be volunteer opportunities. So it could be not particularly about uh, connecting to services, but just um, knowing about uh, what else is happening in the community. Or things that are, as a senior, that may not be senior services, they may have grandchildren that they would like to find out where they might be able to get daycare or uh, health services or um, information about um, the uh, swine flu, or, and the 211 would serve as a conduit for them to find out information about things that are not necessarily related to their aging, but are in their uh, family's circle oh. of stuff that is happening. We see so many seniors that are taking a very active role in raising their grandchildren, so it's a cross-generational so, program, yes. which is great. Now when, you know, as we're talking, I'm thinking about because 211 is a national program, correct? That's right. Um, 
211 in New York State covers about 92 percent of the of the population in New York State has access to 211 service now, and um, almost 75 percent of the country has uh, access. Some states are more um, comprehensively covered than in other states. Um, it isn't. Um, the national government is not funding the initiation of this. This has all been kind of uh, community driven, um, primarily by the United Ways in, in communities as it is here. Uh, so it's been kind of a bottom up process. Uh, we do have the permission um, to use the 211 uh, three digit number, but it's been a community process. But it is national, mm -hmm. it is all over the country. And we can connect you if you need to have. Um, information about services for somebody in another uh, part of the country and you don't even have a clue about how to begin that, we can connect you to the 211 service in that area so that you can start your process. Yeah, that, that was way. going to be my next question because we have so many adult children who don't live near their parents, maybe out of state or on the other side of the country. So I'm thinking as we're trying, as you're trying to help a person age well here in Albany County and you're a long distance caregiver, you could call from California, wherever you were, and be given the information that, that's available here. Right, in this to county. connect. Um, e either to the, the county's New York Connect system to your uh, senior resource department or depending on what the the issue is directly to the service provider if that seems to be the appropriate way to go. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people get um, the, the best comprehensive um, information that they possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we've made the uh, agreements with the um, 911 systems, with the Child Care Coordinating Council, other uh, organizations that have lots of information. Uh, we don't want to duplicate them, but we want to get the person to the people who know the most about what their presenting problem is. Right. Not too long ago, Aaron Stackowitz from Albany County New York Connects was on my show, and we talked about that program and how New York Connects works in Albany County. Can you tell me how you would work uh, a little bit more specifically with the New York Connects program, and who should seniors call if you know they don't if they don't call our department first? Who should they call? How do, how would that work for somebody who's looking for information, whether for themselves or a family member or a neighbor? What we have agreements with the New York Connects system, and in Albany County, we um, as uh, we have the most sophisticated um, arrangement. Um, if they call two one one and and are appropriate uh, looking for long term care uh, questions, uh, we refer them to the New York Connects. And I think the way that two one one is an assistance there is that you don't have to remember or try to find where the New York Connects phone number is. Mm -hmm. If that isn't at your fingertips and you know that that's a question that you have, maybe you can just remember two one one. And so you could call two one one. They would get you uh, connected to uh, the New York Connects. If, if you're in Albany County uh, to, to that department, if you were in uh, an, another uh, region, we would get you to that county, uh, New York Connect system. Um, so our, and what we've been able to do with them, they get some calls that are not appropriate for them um, because they have to do with food stamps or something that's not in their uh, area of responsibility, then they refer those calls to 211 and um, we can get them hooked up the other way. So we're trying uh, very much to, to refer to each other um, and, and not assume each other's uh, roles. And yeah, not to duplicate. So to, exactly. to date it's been a good partnership? It's been excellent. Um, we really have been able to um, each uh, benefit the other. We have a um, pretty comprehensive database that, um, and, and they need to have that information so we're able to share our information with them and as they know of changes and stuff they help us keep that information up to date so it's a real good collaborative partnership. As I listen to you and I've been doing this work for so long it's been a long time coming hasn't it? It has absolutely because um, in all the years that you and I have worked together a lot of this happened because we knew um, people, but if you don't, you just, it's very confusing about how to enter into the system. And as we are seeing the phone calls that we're getting, people are, this is a tough economic time, and families are uh, encountering problems they haven't encountered before, and they don't know the system at all. 
and they call with just one problem. <laughs> and when you begin to talk to them, that really is, as we know, there are always a lot of other things that maybe there's help out there. Um, you know, a young um, single father called the um, 211, and he was ha his immediate top of mind concern was he was having trouble paying his utility bill. But we were able to help find uh, uh, child care and some uh, health plans and connect him with uh, where uh, job banks and other sorts of things and food pantries, mm -hmm. things he didn't even know were available. So when a, and we'll use this gentleman for example. How long does a does a worker, a two one one worker, work with an individual like that? Well, um, hopefully we would have most of the information to solve the problem as we talk to them uh, on the database, and we can you know keep looking it up and give them multiple referrals. Mm -hmm. um, but they may present problems that it's not immediately apparent from the database, and then we would say that we would get back to them and do some research and see what we can find out, because some problems are kind of unique and you need to kind of find the, the place or the person who can help uh, with the solution to that. Right, and I know in Albany County, as we work to keep folks in their homes and out of institutional care, as you age well, hopefully, in your own home, you're going to need more services. and what maybe when we were doing this work years ago was one or two things that a person may have needed transportation and maybe home delivered meals there's probably more needs than that now as people age you know and live in their homes longer and there are a lot of um, different service providers um, because there are a lot it's of varying needs so to connect them to the right uh, provider, it isn't always just a choice of all of the same, right. um, is, is an important piece of information to have. We've come to the point, um, and you've been following along in this uh, about four-year process that we've been putting this together, we now have 1,400 agencies in our database uh, in our region, so we are really getting to the place where we have a pretty comprehensive understanding of what is um, available, and we're very fortunate in our region to have lo lots of very dedicated, uh, fine service providers. It's just important for the community, the residents, to be able to be, get hooked up to them, I think. Absolutely. Now, as we know that the database is so important, you have 1,400 providers in it. How do you keep that information current? Because it can change so quickly. Well, we um, absolutely, um, on a rolling basis, um, keep every uh, entry up to date on a yearly basis. So if it's not some something that we have either used or gotten information about changes, we will make sure that that agency gets a reminder every year to make sure that our information is current. But the more you use the database um, and, and you get these phone calls, uh, you begin to find where there's been changes and so you kind of on an ongoing basis keep the data up. But the other thing that we've been doing is going to any kind of um, agency uh, gatherings and community fairs and that sort of things and talking to other agencies and making sure that they check our um, profile, which they can do online, and see if there's anything that's changed so that we're doing that all the time. So there's an ongoing process and then there's a way um, uh, that we uh, tag each of the database entries so that in a year they are gone over if that hasn't popped up in some other fashion. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about the emergencies, how, how 2 and one can p play a role. Um, and for example, last year's ice storm, that, that was a real challenge for providers and to make sure that our seniors were safe and, and that needs were met in the community. Can you tell me a little bit about what 2 and ones function would be in a situation like that? Well, we have... Um, been in, in Albany County working very closely with Matt Campbell, who's uh, with the Sheriff's Office and, and, and the person responsible or overseeing uh, or coordinating, not overseeing, the 911 systems in Albany County, and I think there are nine or ten of them. And they see an enormous value to having the 211 so that they can take care of um, 
the real emergency stuff and they can get the 211 number to be the thing that's communicated through the media. If you call 211, you can find out where the shelters are. You can find out about, and the power company can use 211 to let us know how regions are getting, um, you know, when they expect the power to go on so that they don't have all the phone calls coming to them. Mm -hmm. um, we were not um, yet live in December of 2008, but it would, we would have been a perfect um, adjunct to the this, uh, entire other 911 system that was out there um, so that we could help with those uh, non-emergency uh, pieces, but the just day-to-day -day life. And the Red Cross also sees that, uh, for instance, that 211 is an important adjunct to them because they'll go in and do the crisis intervention when there's been a fire, but there's a period of time that they see themselves involved, and then their time period with that family comes to an end. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the issues with the family have come to an end. So 211 is a perfect handoff for that family. Um, and 911 also gets calls that are not necessarily emergency calls, but people don't know where else to call. So now we're an adjunct, a good adjunct for 911 so that they can get those people to the help that they actually need and they can stay available for those emergencies. For the emergencies, right. Um, so it, it's really, um, and, and it's quite exciting to see that um, they're so relieved to have a partner because every time you get somebody who calls you or who used to call me and they want help, the thing you want to do is help them. Mm -hmm. And if that's not your um, area of expertise, you may not have the complete picture. Right. So they're very thankful uh, so, to have the resource to get the people to the right information that they need. So there's an outreach piece that needs to happen with utility companies yes. and the Red Cross. And, and that's all being done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would Takes be very time. <laughs> Yes, that's a very important. I didn't really think too much about that whole piece of coordination that would need to occur because it, it's not going to um, maximize what the program can truly provide to to residents in Albany County or in the 12 region area that we cover here unless we have everybody at the table. Exactly. Um, the, the first part was to simply get the service up so that um, th that we could be a collaborative partner. Um, but Matt Campbell was saying the other day that they're now on their screens, there's an automatic um, n n little toggle that says, you know, get to 211 for this question so that the there's an easy transfer mm -hmm. for some of these 911 systems. So when they get somebody who really is isolated and lonely and perhaps a little scared, they can get them to the help that they need. Mm -hmm. I have to say, when 211 was being talked about quite a few years ago, yeah. I was concerned about it. I was concerned that the system is already a little fragmented and um, there's another provider out there. But as I've watched it evolve over four years, I've seen it more take on the role of what could be the underpinning of how all of our human services are delivered through that coordination. That's such a critical piece, uh, to, particularly when you're dealing in an emergency situation. So it, to me, it, as I've learned and worked with the program, have really seen it evolved to much more than I thought it was going to be when it started. I think it's, it's, it's going to change, and it's already begun to change, the dynamic of how people can get access to services. Um, if we have this wonderful service system, and our struggle has always been to be clear to the community about what you provided, what uh, the agency I work with provided, what every, every agency has that issue. Um, now, uh, I think that there'll be a clearer pathway to the door of the agencies um, that are providing services. The person that'll get there is, um, is is appropriate, and the person's not going to be so frustrated in finding it or being left without uh, any service at all simply because they didn't know about it. Right. And the other thing that we're beginning to uh, understand is every month we see what the calls have come about. What is the, what are the community issues? What are presenting themselves? Not surprisingly, right now they have to do with economic issues, and housing issues. Um, how how to find housing? How to get uh, money to for 
rent or utilities. Um, so all how to find jobs, the things that you would see out of this uh, economic downturn, you see in, in these calls. And I'm sure that as, the, as that situation evolves, you'll see a different set of things. Food pantries are in the top 10. But what it allows providers and funders to know is we think we have the answers, but now we have something that is, um, you know, written down that says this is what are the issues. So as we talk to potential funders, we can be much more uh, clear about what's the community need out there. Yeah, that, I always find that in, in the town as I look over our demographics for the year and the statistics that we track, what I thought were the greatest unmet needs usually present differently at the end of the year when I compile my statistics for the year where you know we think we're going in one direction but the need is really somewhere else. So. And it's so important to know that mm -hmm. uh, so that we can use the resources for where the community need is. Well, let's talk a little bit about resources because I know it's a United Way funded program, but United Way doesn't fund the entire program, if I'm correct in that. Well, um, the operation that we have currently, that's a Monday through Friday, um, and the 9 to 5, um, the United Way, there are actually five United Ways in this 12 county region. The United Ways are um, trying to build their capacity to fund that level of service. Um, no, no, 211 is um, required to try to get to 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, we don't have the resources to, to do that yet. And we, our hope is that the state's financial situation will uh, clarify itself or improve in the next uh, year or so, and they can come back into funding 211 because they had been for, for three years. Um, but they do not see themselves as being the total funder of the program. They want it to be a partnership with the regions. So our region is needs to be responsible and feel that this is important enough that they can support it um, at this level. And then getting to 24-7, we would hope we would get either federal or state support to get to that level. So it would become a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be... Um, a pretty substantial, not all of it, but it, um, a third to a half of the cost of the program would be uh, United Way responsibility. And that really means that the community needs to step up and, and give money to support uh, the 211 system across these 12 counties. And can that be done f um, for uh, employees like myself through our u annual United Way giving? Yes, because on a United Way pledge form it says you know, you can direct your money to a particular agency or to a particular problem area, and 211 is on that. Mm -hmm. And um, we are in any, in lots of other regions in New York State, the United Way has sometimes for as long as 20 years supported a general information referral service. We've not had that in this region. Um, and there are regions that have as as much population as we do in this region or less and they feel that this kind of service is important to them and they support it through the united uh, way giving so we're hopeful that the community will find this an important service and uh, and give to the united way to the level where they can support at least the level of service that we have now right it would be great to see it be extended to 24 7 program but i know that's a little ways off in the future. What, what the um, reality is that most of the calls come between 9 and 5. Um, it would be great to go into the weekends because there are people who um, that's the time when they have the time to make the call. Right, right. Um, but that's that's going to be a building process for right. us at this point. Well, you talked about uh, not only can uh, folks calling 211 get information on services, but also volunteer opportunities. So it would be interesting to know if there's a role for volunteers in this 211 program. We, we have built um, this uh, 211 system around um, a pretty comprehensive volunteer component. Um, Family and Children's Service of the Capital Region is the operator of the call center, and they had, have been the operator of a crisis hotline called Samaritan's Crisis Hotline for 
10 or 12 years, mm -hmm. and it is manned by volunteers. So building on their expertise of um, how a volunteer can be appropriately trained to answer crisis calls, um, we have moved some of those uh, Samaritan volunteers are cross-trained and uh, answer 211 calls, but we also have trained about 21 volunteers who work with paid staff um, to uh, answer the phone. So we are using a combination of volunteers and paid staff uh, to do the phone answering and some uh, data management too. Mm -hmm. If phone calls are not your thing, they can work with the agencies to keep the data updated. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as students, um, college students are interning and volunteering in the in the program, and I think it's a great way for the um, resources to be stretched, but also it's an extremely interesting volunteer opportunity. Yeah, I would agree with that, and I would think for any student intern, I'm thinking about social work interns that I take so often uh, in my in my job. Um, what a wonderful opportunity it would be to get that intensive training to know all the resources out out in the community and to work with them. Uh, it, whether you choose a career path in aging or in youth, it's all there. It's all under the 211 umbrella. And that you'd have to learn that interviewing skill where you talk with the person and help them, help identify what are the different kinds of problems, which is a very big component of uh, social work uh, curriculum. So it's, it's a great opportunity for them and it allows us to um, extend our resources um, as greatly as possible. And I don't think it, it compromises. In fact, I think it enhances the uh, program uh, quite a bit with, with people's life experience added to the, to the mix. I would agree. We're winding down on our time, Anne. As we finish up, are there any last minute bits of information that you would like to get out to the viewers? On well, we would just like them to use the service mm -hmm. and to tell other people about it. Um, and to think if it's, if it's a volunteer opportunity that suits them, um, they can call to just 211 and, and let people know they'd like to volunteer. There's a training component involved. Um, and to just spread the word that this service is out there and, um, and think about the United Way in, in supporting the, the service so it can continue to be in our region. I think it will, as I said, forever change how people can get to service we have such a wonderful group of service providers like yourself. We just need to get the people directed to those services. Yeah, coordination has always been the challenge. We've yes. been doing this a long time, you and I, and uh, it's always the challenge. So as I said before, I do see 211 as, an, as the underpinning that can really coordinate how folks access Work, access help efficiently uh, and you know make one call you just have to hit three buttons on your phone right. and and you're there you're not calling you don't have to remember you don't have to have a little list of everybody's phone number for everything right, right. Um, and it, we're not trying to um, do anybody else's job we're just trying to get the person to the people who are doing the jobs it's great great information great program thank you Ann, for joining me thank today. you for asking me this is such an exciting opportunity for our region it's a pleasure to talk about it great well thank you for joining me and thank you for joining me on another show today I'm glad that you joined me and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.